So a lot of people were asking, at least half the room was asking about memory stuff. And uh, most people don't know this. I was just telling people during the break. Uh, when I was an undergrad, uh, first of all, the, one of the first class, one of the things I learned early on was I invested in what I call meta skills. Meta skills are skills that apply to everything. So my whole life has been a quest for the Swiss Army knife of learning, right? And early on, I discovered that part of learning was learning how to memorize, learning how to you know, assimilate and acquire vast amounts of data in ways that were useful. And so I started looking for ways to amplify and accelerate my ability to learn. Uh, one of those courses was a, was a, a course by, uh, called Mega Memory by a guy named Kevin Trudeau. But my, my, my idea behind meta skills was always things that were, had multiple applications. So the ability to learn something quickly and deeply, memorize things, these are things that will help you everywhere. So it was higher on my priority list than say, you know, um, how to screw in a light bulb or something. You know, you know, I can only screw in a light bulb one way. So. But you know, I can apply I can apply learning and memorization to martial arts. I can apply it to hypnosis. I can apply it to dating and relationships. I can apply it to any place where I have to acquire and use information. So to me, that's what I call a meta skill. Hypnosis is a meta skill. There is no place in life where hypnotic processes and hypnotic technique is not going to help you if utilized properly, right? Per conversational persuasion skills, persuasion skills, meta. There is no place where getting another human being to do what you want is a bad thing, right? <laughs> so these, this has been the focus of my life and why I continue to do these masterminds. Because each and every time I come in, I have a brand, a, even if they're the same people, I have a brand new set of skill sets that I have, or you know, goals that I have to teach and I have to, I'm forced to put all these things together in a way that generates the outcome. So I studied a course called uh, Mega Memory by Kevin Trudeau. Some people we were talking about during the break about this process called the Mind Palace. Um, and so I figured, well, we're using hypnosis. We're talking about memory. So let's make today about memories. Uh, and we're going to do a little, uh, some breakouts. We're going to utilize the four magic bullets because, and you wanted to work on your inductions, so you can do other inductions in addition, but these are the processes that you're going to engage in once you do it. So when we talk about learning, when we talk about memory, remember that the most plastic, the most receptive and impressionable our brain has ever been is when we were children. Zero to seven, we are just one big hard drive, okay? so. One of the things that we can do is we can activate early learning states. Early learning states and our, our processes, and at, at the, the earlier back we go, the more plastic the brain becomes. The longer we keep you in that, that phase, in that period, the more you will tend to take on those attributes and qualities. It's an aspect of what we call deep trance identification. If I put you in a state, let's say you're a music prodigy, right? And I put you in a deep hypnotic state, I've immersed you in the works of Mozart and Beethoven, I regress you and I put you into the body of Mozart and Beethoven and I have you practicing Mozart and Beethoven's work while you're in that state, you will come out of it a super musician. Russians did this for, for decades before it ever got to this country. They would put their, their prodigies in these deep altered states, have them identify with some composer or, or athlete or, or what have you, and they would come out supercharged. Okay? We can do similar things. So we can do it through regression, which means we can regress to a time in our life when we were in those states. Two ways we can do it. We can just regress to childhood and start learning as a child, or we can regress to specific points in our childhood when we learn something really deeply and really fast. And as we go back into those processes, we will take on the qualities and the attributes that we had in those moments. Okay? Another way to do it is drug of choice. Drug of choice is more of an NLP style intervention, which was originally designed to help people re-trigger hallucinogenic states. If you have ever had you know, a high from marijuana, there's a sequence of places in the body of sensation. We've done this many times in the class where you start by following that chain of sensation through the body until it comes back to its point of origin. By the time you reach the point of origin, that state is fully, fully re-engaged and you don't need the substance anymore. You can anchor it to a trigger and you can have it anytime you want. We can take this same exact process, the same exact methodology for any state. Any state. Early learning, 
orgasm, you know, the best high ever, whatever it is, you can have it, right? Because the body remembers the states. But by finding its origin. Mm -hmm. If you can point to where you feel it, it all is going to go back. Yeah, it's it's all good. Yeah, it's all going to go back to body states, right? This is kind of the the hallmark of our approach. If we can point to where we feel it, we have all the power we need over it. Okay, and the body always has a place, always has a place. So you can use drug of choice. You can regress to cause. We talk about <coughs> installation now. So we've created a, a state in us that is very, very conductive, very, very open, very, very impressionable. So now we can start to install information. To install information powerfully into the brain, you need several characteristics. A, it needs to be a picture. Now, now it doesn't have to be a good picture, right? It can be, a, a, you know, like, so I don't see pictures. Yeah, everybody sees pictures, you just may not be consciously accessing them. But if I ask you to imagine a quarter, you can imagine a quarter in your head even if you don't see the picture. So you know there's an image there. So as long as you know there's an image there, whether you see it consciously or not, it still works, right? So replace the idea of seeing with imagining a construct, right? Could be something you can tan that's very tangible to you. It needs to have action in it. it needs to be very, very dynamic. The more action you get in, in you, you you put in the process, the more rapidly the brain grabs a hold of it. That the image is moving. Mm -hmm. And when I say movement, I I mean what I'm really talking about is dynamic interaction. Dynamic interaction. Okay. When we, go, when we start talking through some of the things like memory palace and pegging and things like that, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Nonsensical. The more ridiculous the imagery, the more powerfully the mind grabs it. The reptile brain is designed to sort for contrast. Okay? <laughs> Things that are unusual get our attention. If they get our attention, they take up more real estate in the brain. If they're dynamic, even more so. If there's strong emotion attached to it, even more so. Uh, if you've read The Memory Palace, uh, if you have uh, Moonwalking with Einstein, which is a good book if you want to study memory techniques, there's a story in there about a, uh, an English uh, deacon or vicar or whatever they call them, and he would memorize all his sermons by m imagining the most pornographic imagery in his memory palace. I mean, massive orgies as he's preaching fire and brimstone, right? Because that kind of imagery is exactly what the meat grabs onto, right? So we need to work in the dynamics, right? And you will suck at this at first, okay? Because this is a technique that makes use of the natural propensities of the brain. Okay? This is a skill set. When you memorize things, this is what happens by default, more often than not. But we need to kind of step, we have to actually go backwards in order to go forwards and make this a conscious process. The more you do it, the more neuroplasticity in the brain you will create. The more neuroplasticity you create, the more of your nerve fibers start to do this. The more of this that happens, the more memory capacity you get, and the more access to information that was maybe lost or buried becomes available. Every nerve in your, every, every nerve in your brain wants to connect to every other nerve. That's the natural human condition. It never stops. Okay? Spatial locations, when we get to the concept of memory palace, okay? Uh, the memory palace, the, the human being is hardwired for spatial memory better, better than any other form of memory. So what happens is once you've got the, di you understand the dynamics, now we create a construct within the mind, which we already know because we've already, we all have a house. So we already have one that we've memorized. It's already there. We utilize that construct as a vessel or a library, if you will. We create, we organize it in a very specific way. As we move through the processes of memorization, we'll, we'll organize things and put things in these rooms 
based on these dynamics. Graphical, dynamic interaction, nonsensical. And if you can put emotion in there, so much the better. Yes? Uh, what about physical? What about physical movement? If I attach I would physical movement to something that helps me remember. Yeah, that's fine. Is that, is that just... What's the gray room? Right, right. What's the gray room, right? What's the magic frame? Right, right. What's spinning, yeah. right? Anytime you can get the body engaged, you're going to have more juice flowing through the system. Okay. It's that simple, right? If you're having trouble memorizing something, remember how you were standing or sitting when it happened. And you will tend to, within two minutes, you will tend to go back into that state. It's, 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 it's meta, all right? It's going to happen. So we need to take, a, take the idea of what we already got and expand on it. Does that make sense? So we're going to do, we're going to do some drills. And we're going to talk about actual recall. Uh, and recall comes in two varieties. Information that we've put in utilizing these techniques. And then information that was there prior to the technique. Right? Recovering memories and things like that. If we have time, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, one of the things that, that we need to understand is when we're, if you're using a lot of marijuana, marijuana is a memory retardant. Benzodiazepines are also a memory retardant. So if you're on benzos, uh, some of the more advanced regression stuff may or may not work. I haven't found it to be a problem clinically yet, but Brent Baum, apparently in his work, he's run into problems with people who use a lot of marijuana in terms of memory recall and stuff like that. But I haven't. I mean, I, if, they, if they just had a joint right before they came in, yeah, now we got a problem. But if they've been off, if they're off of it right now, you know, at that moment, I haven't seen it, but benzos tend to be also memory retardants, so we need to look at that. Questions about this? Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to memorize some stuff. Okay? Uh, and this is actually, again, something I originally learned from uh, Trudeau's uh, Mega Memory, which a lot of, he's, you know, this was before he became infamous. But we're also going to use hypnosis for this. Oops. I got to get better at this. That's better. You guys can see okay? I don't have two there. Okay. So. Um, one, two, three, four, whoops. Four, five. Hopefully I won't screw this up. You guys know the, 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 the magic formula seven plus or minus two, right? Mm -hmm. That's actually not accurate, but the purport proportionally is close enough, is true enough to be true. If I ask you to name, uh, you know, as many different types of candy bars as you can, how many come to the top of your head? You, right? Cigarette packs, same thing. You usually, usually by the time you hit five, you start struggling a little bit, and by seven, give or take, right? Okay, so let's see here. Pencil. Dice. Uh -huh. mm. Give me a... Uh, mm. Back to that one. Five. Give me, give me some random thing. Pillow. Pillow. Uh, give me one. Glass. Glass. Plane. Boat. Boat. Okay. 
Candy. Candy. <laughs> okay. Nine. Uh, plant. plant. Ten. Picture. Picture. Okay. Now, yeah. Now, this first piece is really what we call basic association, right? A one and a pencil kind of look the same, don't they? Right? Dice, there's usually two. Or snake eyes, right? Three. Usually still has three legs, right? What about pillow? What can we associate? Four corners. Four corners? Okay. Right? How about a glass? It's five letters. Five letters. Okay. Plain? Bake this again, this is basic association. Six seats in a row. Six seats in a row? Hmm. No, okay. How about boat? Kind of looks like a sail. Seven seas, there you go, right? Seven seas. Again, now, now what we're going to be working into is not basic association, but what we can do with these is we can, since they're associated with a number, number one is pencil, right? What's number two? Number three is? Number four is? Number five is? Hello. You see what's happening? Yeah. You've connected two things through basic association. So this is a very fast way right off to start creating hooks. Right? So if you're going to attach things to numbers, this is a way we can do it. Because we change a number into a pencil. So let's say that the first thing on my list that I want to put in my, in my memory palace is um, me writing a, a story. Right? So the first thing might be a pencil and then some, you know, writing on a piece of paper and I put it on my desk. Right? So you can create a hook and attach things to the hook. Mm -hmm. You can also put the hook in the memory palace and now you've got things, like you arrange things in your house, mm -hmm. you can arrange things within the memory palace. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's just do this. Uh, what's number eight? Candy. What, do we, can we, what can we associate with candy? You ate the candy. You ate the candy. <laughs> All right, phonetically you could do that. You ate the candy, right? <laughs> All right. How about plant? Nine planets. Nine planets. There you go. Nine. Well, that's well. We'd have to change that, right? That's easy. That's just an E. Oh, just change the word. <laughs> <laughs> Planet, no. Completely change the word. <laughs> Don't raise the bridge. Lower the water. In your plants anyway. How about picture? Ten to double digit pictures. Two pictures. What? Two syllables. That's kind of weird. That's a little obscure for me. Let's make it really obvious. Mm -hmm. And we don't we don't want them we don't want them to be abstract. We want them to be very. We get a picture of the number ten. Yeah, a picture of a ten in a frame. Yeah. How about the movie Ten? It was a motion picture, right? You don't remember Bo Derek? Who who can forget? Bo? I didn't know the movie's name. I knew Bo. Yeah. <laughs> Bo ten. Yeah. yeah. All right. So maybe wait, maybe what we'll do then is we'll instead of this we'll just make it a movie. Movie ten. Right. Again, because when we create these pegs, mm -hmm. we want them to be simple. Okay. And the more simple the association, the more clear the association, the faster we lock into it. Now most of what we'll be doing after this is not basic association, but we're going to use this to create hooks. Okay. okay. How about, let's see, 11. I'll give you one for 11. Goalpost. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What's that? We're into this peg system and this. Mm -hmm. What about 12? What was 11? What did you say? Goalpost. Oh. Okay. 
Any, any idea why? Looks like an 11, doesn't it? Oh, okay. Right? Eggs. Eggs. Very good. 13. Black cat. <laughs> well, now we're associating things to the numbers. Ah. How about 14? Yeah. Friday. Friday? Friday 14. <laughs> Friday the 13? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he put pink fish. So we're on 14? 14. I would say candy, but you guys already got that one. Valentine's Day. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hearts. Hearts? Okay. Hearts, fine. Fifteen? Wait, did the game change? Am I thinking of things that fifteen reminds me of, or am I just thinking This is, this is basic association, so okay. it can be either way. Okay. The less abstract, the better. You guys sit too close together. <laughs> Zach. Yeah. Captain Abstraction, what do you got, brother? March. Uh, Hides of March, March yeah. 15th. Yeah. 16? How about magazine? Mm -hmm. 17. Or actually, uh, yeah. actually, how about we do this? How about we do, yeah, how about we do birthday? Magazine. 18, voting booth. 19. Graduate. Graduate? That's weird. Okay. We'll see if it works. 20. How about cigarette? Can you buy when you're 20? 20 cigarettes to a pack. Oh. All right. Now, so let's read them out loud. Number one is pencil. Say it out loud. One is pencil. One is pencil. Two is dice. Three is, stool. Three is stool. Four is pillow. Four is pillow. Five is glass. Five is glass. Six, Six is plane. plane. Seven is boat. As you keep going. Now, as you go through the base, you're going to say it out loud again. But now, as you do it, I want you to imagine the association. Say the association out loud with each of these, so you lock them together. One is pen. Do it several times. Go through it five or six, three to five times. Mides of March. That's a bit one. Mm -hmm. It should be graduate. Graduate? Okay. Graduation? Got it? No. Good. Now write them from memory. It's in there. Oh, you just, there was, there was one in there.
<laughs> Surprise! I did think about it. Done, Zach? Good morning, Mr. Yeah, Which ones you missing? Six and twelve. Six and twelve. Ten, fifteen, seventeen. Ten was movie or motion or motion picture. Twelve was eggs. <laughs> Six or dead. Seats. Six seats in an airplane, right? Ides of March. Magazine. So, in less than five minutes, you memorized at least 17 things. So, for me, I've got well, you know what a 10 looks like, right? Yeah. You can imagine a 10 on, in the movies, right? Yes. And if you really wanted to get viral, you can imagine her flashing you, shaking her boobies at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you hear Bolero when I think about it. Yeah, yeah. right. So basic association works, right? You can make it and turn it into a really cool drill now, because now these are pegs. See, if I were to ask you, if I were to just think that and say, what's 13? Rich. What's 20? Six. What's 11? See, it's hard to forget now, isn't it? Right? Now you can take this same idea and make it even more dynamic and turn it into a movie. <clears throat> and the more ridiculous the movie, the more vivid it sticks. So when you make the movie, do you go like one, like each number of scenes? So I can say two guys. Yeah, you can, yeah. <laughs> Huh? On a stool, drinking out of a glass, falling out of an airplane, yeah. right? Landing in a boat. Full of candy. In the boat is filled with candy. They, think, they eat all the candy and they wind up waking up on another planet. Yeah. <laughs> Making a movie Making about a, a goalpost. Yeah. Soccer player. Right? You see how dynamic and it just sticks in your head? Right? And how fast can you run through that movie once it's made? Yeah. Right? That's my question, though. Mm-hmm. This does require, and I'm sure that the more you do it, the better you get at it, mm -hmm. where it doesn't require as much conscious effort. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but in my normal work life, mm -hmm. um, I feel like this could just be a conscious like roadblock that I made for myself. I feel like one of two things would inhibit this. A, um, not, uh, not predicting what the doctor may be asking me about the patient in terms of you know, when they just start grilling you about what's going on with the patient, or B, not necessarily having enough time when things are moving so fast to sit down and go, okay, I think the number of this lab, or this is this diagnosis, or this history, mm -hmm. or this, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, the you're kind of in the same boat, I bet, yeah. Instead of a patient thing, it's like, well, I have like five minutes to learn basically a surgery <laughs> that I've never done before. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? Within that set surgery, are there stock procedures? Depending on the surgeon. But yeah, there's an overarching thing to it. Right. So you, see, you, know, you know what a suture is versus, a, you, know, you know, there are certain procedures that are generic and universal mm -hmm. to every procedure, mm -hmm. right? Turn those into symbols, they become your code. Okay. Right? That's your shorthand. And then anything that's unusual, you create on the spot. Okay. Right? See, once you have, see, this is stuck, this is in there now. It's a resource. You can stick things to it. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's why we started with this. So, 
Let's say you wanted to memorize a number, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a phone number or something like that. Could you create a seven, a seven figure, uh, you know, a seven letter movie? Oh, and use the associations of this case. Okay, I see. So you're saying you would always, this would always be your sequence? It could be. You could, you could be, but you could install any number of these. Okay. Right? And this is still the beginning aspects of it. But just these drills will cause those faculties to enhance and increase over time. And if you do them in trance, right, which is, all memory states are trance states anyway, you can amplify them, right? So a lot of this, again, is things that you have to do. You can't wait until the well's on, until the barn's on fire to start digging the well, right? It's just, these, these are memory installation techniques. Does that make sense? Okay. When you start to learn, when you start to install the information, the more vivid and compelling you make the initial installation, the more rapidly it's going to enter long-term memory, right? But again, you have to go backwards in order to go forwards. This is why most people won't do this, by the way, because it takes extra energy on the front end to be able to reap the benefits on the back end. Okay? They'd much rather do it the easy way and just get hypnotized, right? which is not always the easy way, but it can be. Because again, early learning states, and we have lots of examples in our life of one-time learnings. And those states are locked in the neurology as well, right? But how do we best utilize those? Can we take an early one-time learning state and take one of these techniques and install it while you're in that one-time learning state so that it generalizes and becomes that functional more rapidly, right? So now you have a synergistic effect. Does that make sense? Okay. Questions on this technique? Okay, so um, uh, I think we're done with that. So I just figured out how to make that go away. Cool. I just used my magic finger. All right. So questions. Where do you want to go next? What do you want next? Not a clue, huh? So with the so you make this list of twenty or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can connect those pegs through action. Mm -hmm. And that's the secret is, um, well, let's just go ahead and start building our memory palace. Okay, a couple, of a couple of things when we start building a memory palace. A, start with a building that you're very, very familiar with. Most of us will use our house. Okay, second thing. When you organize your house, the rooms in your house from left to right or right to left, but keep the order consistent, right? For each room in your house, pick five to seven things that are large and relatively immovable. If they represent, mm -hmm, if they represent something that is a vessel of some kind, it, uh, when I was looking at some of the reviews on this, um, the things that large people largely chose were vessels of some kind. They held things like a microwave, or a safe, a chair, a bookshelf, right? Because you can put things in, you can stand, but they're big, okay? Uh, when Kevin, when I was learning the Memory Palace through Kevin's book, he had us put things on the walls and on the ceiling, right? I don't really care how you do it, but when you walk in and you, what you want to do is you want to, and we're going to actually, we're going to walk through this consciously, then we're going to actually do it in trance, okay? okay? You walk into your room and you look at the room from the doorway and you go in order and you number each of the things. So if I walk in to my room and the first thing I notice to my left is a bookshelf and then maybe I see my closet then I see my desk and then my bed and then my wife's desk and then my bureau. Now the other thing you want to avoid is in each room no duplication. So if, I'm, if I have a desk in one room and I go into the net, no desks. So each room has a different Each item. room has individual unique items in it. Individual unique items. Right. Could it be a different type of desk? I would, I would say, yeah, but that, that's one of those gray areas. If you can find something that's completely different, mm -hmm. so much the better, right? So you go through room one, one, two, three, four, five. 
discrete objects, go to room two, start again, left to right, pick up where you left off. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Room two, room three, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh. Right? Right? So let's say you're having trouble finding something in one of those rooms. You could go to your peg list, put a pencil in the room, or put a, a carton of eggs in the room. Right? And I'll say, why the fuck is a carton of eggs here? Oh, it's 12. Right? See, that came out spontaneously. <laughs> right? You see how it works? Yeah. Because of the pegs now, if, if we don't have something, we can put a peg in there. And now we have one. And because it's already locked into your long-term memory, we know what that represents. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right? So however many rooms you have, you go through each room, 1 through 5, 6 through 10, 11 through 15, until you've gotten your 20 or however many rooms there are. Right? When you begin to move through your house, if let's say you want to memorize something that you've read, the first thing you're going to do, you don't try to memorize it while you're reading it. You go through it, you highlight. I'm, I, I came across this, I did, started doing this by accident, and I found out later on this is how you do it. As you're reading, you highlight the things you want to remember. And then when you go to your memory palace, the first thing that you highlighted, you connect to the first thing in the room using imagery, dynamism. Right? Everything, every piece of information that you get, you must turn into some kind of a graphically manipulatable image. Okay? So if I need to memorize um, like Abraham Lincoln, the state of Kentucky, um, which is, he was a, the 16th state or something like that. I need to turn the number 16 into some kind of a, some kind of a graph, maybe 16th street, like a road sign or something like that. Or maybe I see this, the outline of the state of Kentucky. And I need to use all those images rather than the words. We never use words per se. Does that make sense? Yeah. We can speak them out. We know what they mean. The process of translation activates more neural connections as well. Right? And then we're going to connect all those using action. Right? So I may walk in and let's say, um, you know, the first thing I want to memorize is Abraham Lincoln and um, well, let's see, what's something weird. He was from the state of Kentucky. Um, so I might, I might walk in and I might see Abraham Lincoln beating some dude over the head with a, a cardboard silhouette of the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. See how ridiculous that is? But yet, you can see that and it, the dynamism of it attracts the attention. Mm -hmm. And so I know right away that Abraham Lincoln was from Kentucky. Right? And so you can do that with everything in your, in your memory palace. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And we're going to do these, actually, we're actually going to install these things in trance. So, but that's why we have the pegs. You have the elements in your, um, in your gray room, or not gray room, your memory palace. But could your gray room be a memory palace? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's got all the same elements, doesn't it? Yeah. That's my point. How many rooms do you make? As many as you want. What's the significance of making a room versus just having a big room? Lots of rooms. I don't know that there is one. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, you can just keep adding rooms for new stuff, which I think is important. You know, um, and because we're hard again, it's easier for us to memorize things on a spatial in spatial memory than it is any other way. So the more we can turn things into three-dimensional objects within our mind and, and work with them, the more rapidly we utilize the brain's capacity. Okay. Gray room would be something we could use to start to unlock memories. Uh, magic frame. Can all, think of it. Everything that we do with the gray room, the magic frame, could all be rooms in, in our memory palace yeah. where we do certain things. Uh -huh. Right? It's the yeah. same stuff. Right? So, um, so what we're going to do, first and foremost, let's start to access early learning states. How many people here ever had a situation in their life where they saw something and they got it instantly. Justin, you ever had that situation? Yeah, I think it was like years of physical things. Cool. Right on. So like, close your eyes. And I want you to just um, pretend to go into the deepest trance you've ever been in. 
And what I want you to do now is I want you to travel back, back to that moment in your life when you learn something really, really, really fast. Now for me, I wasn't that smart as a kid, so for me turning on a light switch was a big deal. Learning how to flush the toilet. These are things that, you know, we take for granted. But there was a moment of epiphany, there was a moment of realization. Like when I was first learning about light switches, I, I noticed that when my mom flipped the switch up, the light went on, and when she flipped the switch down, the light went off, and I was like, I got it instantly. So I want you to go back to those moments where you just saw something, were exposed to it for the first time, and you instantly got it. You instantly knew exactly what was happening, how to do it, how to replicate it. And I want you to notice something as you go there. I want you to notice, ladies and gentlemen, that there was a feeling in your body, both right after you got it, right when you got it, and right before you got it. And I want you to notice where in your body those feelings start. I want you to point to it. First impression. And I want you to notice that there's a color or a series of colors connected to that feeling. Notice those colors. And we're going to do two things first and foremost. When you started to learn, when you first started realizing you had it, there was a feeling that started in your body and then it moved somewhere else. And then it went somewhere else. I want you to just kind of slowly follow that trail of feelings through your body. Notice how it meanders and circles and choruses back and forth until eventually it travels through your whole body, coming back to its point of origin. And then like a river on an endless loop, it just continues to flow. And you may notice that color connected to those feelings getting stronger and stronger and stronger still. I want you to notice what happens as those feelings just continue to circulate and grow deeper and deeper. Seeing what you saw, hearing what you heard, feeling what you felt, and letting those feelings grow. Don't try to measure it, manage it, or make it happen faster. Just allow that process to take place. Allow it to run its course. And then I'd like you to use your imagination once again. And imagine that floating above your head is a beautiful ball of energy in that color. That color of that early, one-time, rapid learning state. And at your own pace, at your own speed, I want you to slowly but thoroughly breathe that color through your entire body. Scan your body as you do. Notice any places of tightness or tension. Density of any kind. Breathe more of that energy through that place and notice what happens. That's right. Getting stronger and stronger. Anchoring those frequencies inside. Letting those feelings come back. And allow yourself to just dissolve into those feelings more and more and more. And it's really, really interesting when we go back into those states, those states where you learn really quickly, how the brain can begin to absorb more information powerfully, deeply, more fully. And so as that body and that mind continue to disperse into that wonderful color, letting those qualities, those characteristics, and those attributes become a more permanent, automatic part of you. But an automatic part of you that you can turn on and turn off whenever you choose, just by remembering the feeling, noticing the color, breathing that color through your entire body. And now I'd like you to imagine as your body continues to sink, to dissolve and to become one with that energy, another part of your awareness 
can begin to float up out of your physical body. Following that path of energy, merging with that color. And when you know you're there, you can allow your head to nod with honest, unconscious movements to let me know that's right. And we'll continue with the next part of our process. Yes, that's good. And in this place, in this color, this energy, merging with the source of it, you can learn, really learn, anything. You can recall vast amounts of information automatically. You can install new information. You can acquire it, assimilate it, and use it. In this vibrational field of rapid learning, your mind, body, and soul is fully receptive, building both the internalization and the installation of information, the assimilation, the recall and expression, getting stronger and stronger. In fact, from this moment forward, for as long as your heart continues to beat and your lungs continue to breathe, your other than conscious mind will now make all the necessary changes to amplify, accelerate, modify, and enhance this rapid ability to learn, really learn. You'll find that you'll look at things, you'll hear things, you'll feel things. The information will come in on all the channels necessary for instant and immediate understanding assimilation and application. And this will happen each night while you sleep and while you dream. Your brain will make all the necessary changes, all the rewiring. It will amplify and accelerate the neuroplasticity of your mind, body, and spirit to become the ultimate learning, assimilation, and facilitation machines that you can be. Information will flow easily, naturally, automatically, on demand, in a playful, fun, and relaxed way. You'll find yourself moving through the world in a more and more playful and fun-loving state because that's the way you learn, really learn. And your unconscious mind will take all the necessary steps to facilitate, express, and embody those early learning states and the prerequisites for them. So as you continue to breathe that energy through every level of your being, every level of your spirit, you may notice and feel changes shifting in your body, in your mind, things that let you know your brain is changing. And when you know you've got that, when you know it's locked in, when you've anchored those frequencies in so fully and so completely that it's impossible to be any other way, try to turn it off. And notice what happens instead. That's right. And in this place, my friends, I want you to begin to use that amazing imagination of yours. And I'd like you to imagine that you're standing in front of your house, looking at the front door. And when you're ready, I want you to just go inside. And we're going to begin to finalize and concretize our memory palace together. And as we walk inside, we can look immediately to our left and immediately to our right. Now, whether you choose to go left to right or right to left is entirely your choice. You'll just keep it consistent. And I want you to go into room number one, and I want you to pick four, five, six, seven objects from left to right or right to left and number them appropriately. Make them big, make them obvious, make them complete. And when you're ready and you know you've done that, you just allow your head to nod with honest, unconscious movement. And then we're going to move to the next room, only at the rate and speed 
that you can wire this in fully and completely. When you go into the second room, I want you to pick another five things or seven things or whatever number you like. And starting from where you left off in the previous room, number them six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it may even be helpful, as you number those things, to put pegs from your peg list on those objects. So you know exactly which one is which. So maybe in room number, you know, in, in object number six, you put a set of chairs right in front of whatever object or right on top of whatever object you've chosen. Now that's your choice. You can keep it as simple or as complex as you like. When you're done with the second room, I want you to move on into room number three. Pick five to seven objects and continue numbering them where you left off. And then room number four. maybe room number five. Take all the time you need to go through rooms one through five, numbering them completely, appropriately. And then what I want you to do is I want you to go back to the beginning. I want you to step into room one and I want you to physically touch each object that you've numbered. If there's an object on it, you manipulate it, feel it, Move on to the next one. And tell yourself, show yourself what number they are so that you can lock those in completely. And just move through each room, physically handling, touching those objects, naming them, numbering them, until they're so locked in they're impossible to forget. When you know you've got that, try to forget them and notice what happens instead. And realize from this moment forward that anytime you need to, anytime you want to, you can come back to this palace of yours and store and organize, categorize, anything you want, any way you want. And the keys are very simple. Take the information, turn it into a graphic, make it dynamic, as funny and playful as you can, and make them interactive. Make them fun. And what you'll discover over the coming days and weeks and months is that with each passing day, with each passing month, this process will get exponentially faster and faster and faster still. When you know you've got that, nod your head to let me know. And when you're ready, Let's go on back to the entrance to your memory palace and memorize exactly where it is, exactly what it feels like to be in there. Notice where in your body that feeling starts and the color connected to it. Breathe that color through your entire body. Lock it in so fully, so completely. It's impossible to turn on. And realize anytime you want to, anytime you need to, you can consciously put things in your memory palace. And when you choose to, you can unconsciously put things in your memory palace. Teaching your unconscious mind where to put these things automatically. For as long as your heart continues to beat and your lungs continue to breathe, your brain, your mind, your body will make new neurological connections. 
new ways of interacting and interfacing, accessing information. Things you thought were gone will suddenly become more available, spontaneously, automatically, joyfully, for all the right reasons. In a moment, not yet, but in just a moment, I'm going to count from one to five. When I reach the number five, you'll emerge from this process, bringing all of these transformations, revelations, and installations with you. Able to access this state and these resources anytime you want, anytime you need to. Just by breathing that color through your body, remembering what it felt like, and using your imagination and interacting within it. Number one, feel yourself returning to this place we call reality, bringing with you a brand new reality, a reality where you've learned something powerful, a reality where you've tapped into a structure, a resource native to your inner world that's been waiting for you to come back inside and use it better, more fully, more completely. Number two, all of my suggestions from me to you, from you to your very own other than conscious mind, are now ten times more powerful, ten times more permanent, ten times more desirable. Locked into that part of your neurology, mind, body, and soul that most wants, desires, can implement, facilitate, and express these changes in all the ways that make your life better by your standards and definitions. Number three, always at least three ways to overcome any situation, obstacle, or circumstance that you may face. Always at least three solutions to any problem you need to solve in your other than conscious mind will now easily, effortlessly, and automatically generate those solutions in the quickest, easiest, most effective way for the good of yourself and all concerned. Number four. Because it's all for you, ladies and gentlemen. You've done the work. You've followed the instructions. You've obeyed the commands. You've earned the rewards and the right to keep them. It's your reality. It's your truth. And it's all for you starting now. On the next count, you can emerge from this state only at the rate and speed that you know you've got it. Only at the rate and speed that every level of your neurology, mind, body, and soul is in full agreement, full harmony, complete quiescence, understanding, recognition, and realization of all these changes, installations, and revelations implementing them, facilitating them, and expressing them in all the ways that make your life better by your standards and your definitions. Head clear, mind clear, thinking and acting with calm self-assurance. Feeling good all over. Glad to be alive. Ready to thrive. Number five. Take your time. Come on back. Notice how good you feel. Welcome back, dude. <laughs> now, each of you have a little notebook. You're going to list 20 things, random things. Random. 20 random things. All done? Yeah. Who else is done? Those of you who didn't run to the restroom to hide. Yeah. How many you got, Holly? 20. 20? Okay, you give your list to Zach. Zach, you give your list to Holly. Yeah. Yeah. Holly, what? Yeah. You're a doctor. Yeah, hopefully he's going Get off your ass and hand it to her. Yeah. Go. Now, your assignment, go into trance, open your eyes, go into your, actually read the list several times, go into your memory palace, and record them. This is chair right? Seven? Yeah. Okay. Cynthia, you hand yours to Justin. Justin, you hand yours to Cynthia. And the reason I had you write your name is because sometimes it's better to have a body doing the actions. 
So if you're you can't breathe. So right. So you can imagine Zag jump, jumping up and down on a chair, waving a pencil, or the pencil sticking out of his butt or something. Okay. Yeah. Right. Now, this is your job. You've got a list of 20 things. Put them in your memory palace. Ten minutes. Go. All right. So hand the list back to the person. I'm only on ten, but I'll. No, you guys can you can still work unless. You're gonna do this multiple times anyway, so. That's a hard list. Hmm? <laughs> no, you just where you were. You just turned my house what into a house of horror. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Sit your ass down. <laughs> okay, Zach, read, uh, go through your memory palace and um, give us... Holly's? Give me Holly's list. All right. So, um, the first one, do, I, do you want me to go through what I... Yeah, do exactly what you did. Okay, so um, I walk into my first room, and the first object in the first room is a large closet with no closet. You don't have to tell me that, just tell me what the item was. Um, candle. Mm -hmm. yep. Elephant. Yep. Um, cake. Yep. Ice cream. Yep. Um, lawn. No. No. Cake, ice cream. What was the image it used? Um, the elephant was eating a cake made of ice cream in a spa. Yep. On the lawn. Yep. Just watch the movie. Just don't worry about him. Just watch the movie. Fantastic. Bada bing. So you made a story. You like had a whole picture. So you didn't use so much the power. Well, so for me, what I did was I walked into the palace, walked into the first room, and the first thing in that first room, the first big object, there was Holly. And when I said hi to Holly, she showed me mm. the first thing, which was a giant candle, which mm. led me to an elephant eating a cake. In the mm. And it just sort of progressed like that. Mm -hmm. that so did you go through each each post in or each peg in your memory palace, creating the movie as you went? I just went into one, which was the closet. Mm -hmm. There was Holly. Oh, and you Holly. did the whole thing in the closet with yeah. Holly? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you come out of the closet now. I need to come out of the closet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so he, he combined two of the methods we talked about, right? He went into his closet. He created the whole movie in the closet with Holly, right? And that's perfectly fine, right? It's very, actually, it's, it's a very compact way instead of spreading your shit. Yeah, yeah. But that's kind of the idea. See how fast? Right? The body, the brain likes dynamic, silly imagery. Come on, it's all right. The brain likes dynamic, silly imagery. Now, you had a problem early on because you were trying to recall the object instead of the movie. That's why you were stuttering. When I had you re just re see the movie, it all came back. That's the, that's the hiccup, is you've got to remember the movie, not the items on the list. Because they're all implicit in the movie. So as you watch the movie, which, remember, the neurology never resists what it creates, right? It always, always has a, a, a preference for its own imagery, right? That's why if I gave you the imagery, it would stick, but it wouldn't be as nearly as vivid and easy to recall as if you self-generated, right? So even though Holly gave you the items, you generated the metaphor and the movie, boom, it's yours. Now try to forget it. <laughs> right? Go ahead, Holly. Read uh, what you got from Zach. Cobra? Mm -hmm. Shoes? Mm -hmm. Car? Yep. Rug? No. Camera? Yes.
Just go through your house. Yeah, I'm going. I'm, I'm in the next one. Um, picture bigger. Keep going and come back to it. Something. And then and then rug? Yes. Okay. And then Hair? No. Yeah. Not hair? Not yet? Not yet. Because then it goes hair, vest, toenail, scale. Mm -hmm. I gotta go before that? Don't worry about the just, just go. Okay. Hair, vest, toenail, scale. And then cup, mm -hmm. spoon, mm -hmm. silver dollar? Yep. File, glass file? Yes. Leaf purse? Yes. And the other one that I missed was... Start at the beginning. Go again. Beginning? Mm-hmm. Cobra? Mm -hmm. Shoes? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Camera. And then tile. Mm -hmm. And then something rug. And then, that thing. and then don't get hung up on what you don't remember. Keep going. Okay. Rug. And then. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Sword, hammer. Beard. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then I go up to cup, spoon, silver dollar, glass vial, leaf purse. Did I get it? You missed that one. So you also, after beard, there's two of there's uh, four other things. Oh, Mr. Room. Mr. Room? <laughs> <laughs> well, get back there, girl. Oh, then that was, um, then it was after beard, beard hair? Yes. Beard hair vest, on L scale. Yes. Right, and then cups, spoon, silver dollar, glass vial, leaf purse. Yes. See the camera. It's right there. Right there. Yeah. One hint. Okay. Um, it's after tile. It's, let's see. It's so tile shoes. No. So tile is the thing that you can't find. Tile is the thing I'm trying to no, 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 no. Wait, cobra shoes. Yeah. Then tile? No. Cobra shoes. Car camera. The car. How big is your car? My car's little. Oh, make it a big car. You got yeah. a Batmobile or some shit. Yeah, <laughs> I made it little. I need to make it bigger. See, usually when, 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 when the image doesn't come is because when we created the imagery, it wasn't 
significant. It wasn't significant enough. That's what I mean. It has to be big. Yeah. It has to be dynamic. It has to be. The other one after trial was a board game. Board game. Yeah. So I would have to be beating somebody over the head with a monopoly board. Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, and some of them, I made static, and the ones that were moving. I were the ones that are yeah. The ones that were static were the ones that I, I was, and they were small and they were static. So I have to remember that that bigger and moving, pretty mm -hmm. more sensitive. And she still got most of it right, oh, yeah. right? That was, a, that was awesome. Okay, was awesome. and there were no hints. So even the ones you missed in the previous passes, you got on the again, right? Yeah. With no help. So the information was there. It was there. Right. This is the worst you'll ever be at it. But this is really good because I learned something really significant from my learning style, which is to make it bigger, make it more significant, make it move, mm -hmm. maybe make it have color, make it maybe, maybe doing something ridiculous. And this goes right into our therapeutic applications. The people who are chronically depressed, chronically anxious, chronically upset about anything, are the pictures small? Yeah. No, they're not. They're, oh, when they're feeling all that. And when they're that, feeling that shit, are they big, small pictures? Yeah, they're making big pictures. Are they far away or are they close to the body? They're making Big close pictures. Yeah. It's the same system. You want to remember shit? Make it big. Bring it here. Boom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And I sh and I could have made it a car that I have an emotional attachment to, mm -hmm. which I didn't do. Very good. I could do that. Cynthia. Pictures. Okay. I actually had a I don't have my palace down right, so I can move things around. So the order might not be a hundred percent right. I don't care about the order. I just want the items. Book, coat, hat glasses, salt, potassium, blood, urine, heart, lungs, kidney, liver, I'm going to skip it, um, uh, it's pancreas, all the better, Body and face. I know I'm missing at least two. So look up instead of looking down. Um, Start again. Two hat glasses. It's going backwards. Book. Okay. Book, cup, hat, shoes, glasses, potassium salt, urine, blood, heart, lungs, kidney, liver, How many did you get? Yeah, a couple of them were body parts I weren't so good with, like the intestine. Oh, okay. But what was in the cupboard? Okay, a brain was in the cupboard. Okay, when I opened it, there was a brain in a jar. What was it doing? It was just in a jar, sitting there. Yeah. But what were the intestines doing? Everything was just sitting there because I was having a hard enough time having pudding all these, turning my place into a horror house that I didn't really want dancing lungs or. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. with the You heart. can put a smile on their face. <laughs> I have a brain smiling at you. Yeah. All right, big guy. All right, so I only had, I only figured out like 10 places. That's all right. House, so, um, Just go with what you got. So we've got pencil, we've got hat, we've got goggles, shoe, cat, dice, pen, mouse, computer, letter. Okay, the first one is different. That was oh, the other car. Yep. Car made up. Okay. okay. Very good. Excellent. Now, you give your list to somebody different. All you give your list to somebody different. Okay. Same drill. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> this is what you pay me for. Ten minutes. Go.
What's that? That's the fun. It, it, again, if, if your brain thinks of it as pain, it'll reject, it'll reject yeah. it. But when it becomes fun and exciting, the brain grabs it. And that's the secret. When I talk about playful, yeah. all right, this is what I'm talking. This is where it is, man. The more playful we get, the more powerful our memory and other other faculties become. Mm -hmm. I can't stress playfulness too much. Good feelings, positive feelings, mm -hmm. right? Go ahead, Holly. Rock our world. Okay. Book, coat, shoes, hat, glasses, salt, potassium, urine, heart, blood, lungs, kidneys, liver, intestines, brain, gallbladder, pancreas, drugs, body, face. Boom. <laughs> Go ahead, Justin. It's all right. I don't care how, again, I'm giving you an arbitrary time limit, right? I don't care how long it takes. So we got a candle, we got an elephant, we got ice cream melting into a spa, we've got a lawn, we've got a chase lounge, we've got a planet, we've got a barbecue, we've got a stage, we've got a curtain going here, we've got a microphone, and then we've got tickets, money, and that's about where I was able to get to. How'd you do? Good, you got to 15. Mm -hmm. It's all right, you'll get there. And the idea is just play. It's yeah. really just play. Sitting on a bookshelf is a toy, Cynthia. Cynthia leads me to a car. That's where the large hat with goggles on it. Instead of tires, the tires are shoes with large hats on it. <laughs> with dice as well. Mm -hmm. Sitting in the passenger seat of the car is a large pen that's desperately using a large mouse in order to write a letter to a spoon that's on TV. That TV is sitting on a stool playing a harp with a nickel in order to in order to soothe an ice cube that's digging through its purse in order to find a pig who's holding a large moon-shaped acorn. Cats, dice, Run the movie again. Okay. Don't get hung up on the individual items. Run the movie again. Make the picture bigger. Never get, avoid getting hung up on the thing that's missing. Mm -hmm. Just run the movie. It's in there. Yeah. I went um, using the mouse. I just skipped over the computer because the mouse is yeah. going to be the computer. That's why. Okay. All right. Super Cynthia. Let's see. We've got cobras, shoes, car, camera, tile, working, rug. Sword, beard, hammer. Oh, um, hair, vest, toenail, scale, cup, uh, spoon, silver dollars, glass vials, we first. Yes. Boom. Yeah. One last time, find someone who hasn't had your list yet. Go, 10 minutes. Or should I cut it down to seven? <laughs> All right, who wants to go first? Justin, thank you for volunteering. <laughs> All right, so walk in with a cobra. And we go down the shoes, car, camera, tile, organ, rug, sword, hammer, beard. Hair, vest, nail, scale, cup, spoon, silver dollar, glass vial, leaf, purse. Yep. Yep. How is it? Did you get it right, Holly? 
So did he get it right? I think you were so. checking right alongside of him, I know. I think so. Okay. Zach, well done. Justin sits on the back reading a book wearing <laughs> a coat made out of shoes and a hat made out of glasses. He is eating large salt that look like bananas which are high in potassium but make his urine bloody. He sits next to his heart who is sitting on a... No, he sits next to his heart with his good friend Lungs as they sit at a liver-shaped table as they discuss the intestines, brain, and pancreas because they have the galls, gallbladder, to do drugs at the table. And they're currently eating a body starting with the face. <laughs> you said kidneys? Kidneys shake table. I thought you said it was a liver-shaped table. Liver-shaped table. Oh, kidneys was there too. Dang it. Yeah, yeah I noticed there wasn't as much di there wasn't as much uh, interaction. It's a lot of a lot of static imagery on this one, which I noticed yeah. you're having trouble recalling. Yeah. This is again. I can't emphasize this enough. The more dynamic the imagery, the more powerful it has. The more impact it has. There's a tendency for us to default to static imagery, right? I kept changing it because it got like confused. Missing urine of blood through his heart. <laughs> <laughs> you could have had you could have had the heart making love to lungs giving birth to a kidney, <laughs> right? Yeah. And coming out the intestines, yeah. right? <laughs> and you, see, you see how graphic, but still it's it's much more visceral. No pun intended. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> silver dollars, money, and then doing cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> Start yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Cynthia. Okay, so we have candle, elephant, cake, ice cream, spa, a plant doing a barbecue on a lawn by a chair lounge. Um, and then there's a, a blonde selling heart shaped tickets with a stage, a microphone, and curtains. And Run it again from the beginning. Or just pick up and keep going and run it again. Oh, this is the hard one, that's why. Okay, uh, yeah, a dolphin, hot air balloon, starfish, red shoes, and a whistle. No. You alluded to one, you may have missed one, but you kind of Which, used um, uh, money? Heart shape money. Selling to, did you say I heart said heart shape money. Oh, you money. did. Okay. Okay. Because he had the heart shape money. Okay. Cool. You got it. Cool. Okay. You're up, girl. Okay. <clears throat> Car, hat, garbled shoes, cat, dice, pen, mouse, computer, letter, spoon, TV, stool. Heart, nickel, ice cube, purse, pig, moon, acorn. Got it. Boom. Excellent. Starting with you, what was Zach's list? Mm -hmm. Me? Mm -hmm. What's your movie? Or what's your... Oh. Okay, thank you. With Cobra, shoes, car, camera, something, board game, rug? Sword, hammer, beard, 
Yeah. And then... From the movie. Keep skipping that room. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a better room. <laughs> and then start again. Inside, oh, walk this way, you oh, and dear. me. Pay. Um, wow. oh, dear, dear, dear. It's a kitchen, and there's the cup, and the spoon, and the silver dollar. Boom! <laughs> Zach, Holly's list. Holly's list. Walk into the closet, Holly's there. She looks tired. She leads me to a candle, which there's an elephant eating a cake made out of ice cream. In a spa on the lawn with a chair lounge, um, there is plants using a barbecue on a stage with curtains made out of microphones. Um, there are people buying tickets to this stage using park sheet money. They are all blonde people with that uh, wear large whistles on their neck, wearing red shoes with hot air balloons. And on that hot air balloon, there is a dolphin. Being piloted by a starfish. Right. What was Justin's list? Justin's list? Justin sits on a bed reading a book um, wearing a coat made out of shoes. He wears a hat made out of glasses, um, eating salt made that is the shape of bananas, they're great, they're, which is a great source of potassium. Now, he is, however, it does make him very make blood. Um, sitting next to him is, is heart and lungs who sit at a liver shaped table with uh, a the table with his good friends, uh, Estes, pancreas, brain, and kidneys, as they discuss the gall, the gallbladder, using drugs at the table. They're currently eating a body starting with the face. Cynthia. Uh, this, it, yeah, it, Justin's it, list. This, this, this. Okay. She's been practicing it the whole time, gearing up. Yeah, no, I'm, I still have trouble with some parts of it. Let's see. Make it more so dynamic. There's a coat, a chair, I mean, there's a coat, a shoe, a hat, glasses, a book. There's potassium, salt, blood, urine, heart, Lungs, liver, kidney, intestines, brain, gallbladder, pancreas, drugs, body, face. Boom. Justin. Did I not say heart? Okay, the heart was the eye for the blood and urine part. Uh, who's you wanna, um, who, wants to, who wants to hear their list back at them? <laughs> Get Cynthia's list. 
in the car. No, he only got to four, 10 or 14. Yeah, turn on the first. Yeah. Did you say 10? No, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Pick, um, Cynthia, did you do, you started, yeah, never mind. So, Zach. The other one I haven't done is Cynthia. Good to Cynthia. Cynthia said to me, she lives at me, it's to a car wearing a large hat with swimming goggles. With a set of tires, there are shoes with large hats on them and dice. In the passenger seat of the car sits a like pen who is frantically working for the house owner and using computers and regular diet to the spoon. The spoon's on TV. Um, the TV sits on a stool that is playing in heart with a nickel. And in heart with a nickel in order to soothe the ice cube, which is digging frantically through his purse to find a pig that's holding a moon shaped paper. Boom. What was number 13 on your post list? Um, on the peg list we started with? 13 was which? It was 12. Eggs. 20? 20 was cigarettes. cigarettes. Mm -hmm. uh, one? One and was and and Two. Two was Three. Three was Seven. Seven was oh. Oh. Nine? Welcome to the wonderful world of memory. Question for you this. Mm -hmm. So you have two patients. Mm -hmm. And you each have a plethora of different stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So when I made my list, I was really thinking maybe instead of um, maybe making a house, you go through maybe make a body that would work like a house. If you're, really, if you're as intimately familiar with it, yeah. I'm pretty cool with a body, but I can run from head to toe through a body through systems. But can you do it as if you're inside of it? Actually, no, actually, Kevin Trudeau actually did create a body list in his course. He actually created one. Yeah. Uh, starting with the feet, the knees, the joints, um, the elbows, the hands, all the way up to what he called the point, the top of the head. And you could put things on your body and peg them the same way. Yeah. Right? So, if, like, maybe, um, you know, it's more applicable if that deals with systems, so mm -hmm. is there a problem with the intestines, is there a problem with the heart, is there a problem with the lungs? Mm -hmm. You could make a symbol that is dynamic and use the symbols as pegs. How do you get the two not, because you don't want to necessarily, two patients? Yeah, get them crossed. With data? Yeah. Two communities? Well, how did you guys do it? Like, I use the same room for each one of them. Somehow. I, I, I liked what you, but I noticed what you did is you I saw Justin, he waved to me, he was sitting on this. So you associated a person with a location. Yeah, and actually you can take a memory, actually along those same lines, what you can do is you can take a name remembering technique mm -hmm. and compress it or, or, or bond it to this. One of the things that you do when you are, want to memorize somebody's name is you look at them and you find one of the most prominent features that they have and you blow it way out of proportion in your mind then you look at their name, you find an, uh, something that sounds like it, create an image of it, and bond them together, much like you do with the movie, and then that c cements the, the person in there. Then you can use that, just like Zach did with Holly in the closet doing the movie. You can connect that as the beginning, and then all of a sudden, they're the one involved in all these things. So, my well, thing is, I'm, I'm only in one room, all of it, in the first room, but each person is located in different points, five objects, right? My movie doesn't start playing until I interact with whoever's like my movie with you doesn't start until I until 
until I actually look at you reading. Mm -hmm. So when you start reading, it's like, oh, what's, then all of a sudden you're wearing the coat and the shoes. And, and if, you look at, if you look at what we just did, Okay, the first few times we did it, we were doing it just to install the process in you. But then I said, what, and I asked Holly, what was Zach's list? Broom. The minute I said Zach, that context opened and that information became available. When I said Zach, what was Cynthia's list? He flipped through to Cynthia and boom, all of a sudden everything connected to Cynthia came up. Right? So the more dynamic you make that peg for the client or the patient, the easier it is going to be to connect things to it. So the easiest way, you know, so knowing what I know about memory work, uh, which again isn't, isn't all that, in, you know, all pervasive by any stretch of the imagination, but one of the things that you do is you take their name, you take one prominent feature, you turn them into graphics, and you dynamically connect them, and that creates a very powerful peg for that name. And of course, once you have the name, now you can string all these things to it, just like Zach did with the movie. Right? And then he, and I would create, I might even create a pet set of pegs that are organ systems and a symbol for that, but something that, that is both explanatory but as well as very idiosyncratic or, or um, not, but uh, weird that it just sticks out so that you, you have pegs that you can hook these things to. Like I was going to suggest for Zach, he has a lot of procedures he has to memorize. But within all of the big procedures he's got are little modules or little things that are universal to all of those, right? And you can take that series of steps, compress it down into a symbol that represents that. Right? And so you can, you can have a chain of these symbols and when you need to, you, since you know what that symbol represents, you can unpack it instinctively or just run through the chain if you're just going to write down the steps or whatever. Does that make sense? This is how a lot of, in, in, uh, I don't, in, you know, if you know a lot of the old metaphysics, a lot of the old Hebrew was this way, is they would take strings of letters or strings of, of, of verbiage and distill it down to like an acronym, what we would call an acronym today. But each letter would stand for a string of information, right? And so they could, scan, they would, when they did their Kabbalah or their meditation, they could scan that and it would activate, from an NLP perspective, a transderivational search, which triggered all the associations and they could get the effect. Right? From an NLP standpoint, that's what they were doing. On a metaphysical level, they were interacting non-locally. It's the same idea, same principles are running the neurology. Right? So, but again, you can't wait until, the, the, to use that metaphor, the barn's on fire to start digging the well. You've got to create these systems ahead of time. It got easier, too, yeah. for me. As, you know, the first person was a little nervous, was a little harder. And You're becoming more easier. neuroplastic. Right. And developing my own, okay, this worked, this mm -hmm. didn't, yep. learning each time. And figuring this is out. why the magic number for any type of learning three. is three. You've got to do it at least three times. Until you've done it at least three times, you don't own it neurologically. It's in scratch pad memory. Okay. Three times. Now what we did first is we primed the pump. We put you into trance, we activated early learning states, we amplified neuroplasticity, we installed the memory, the memory palace there, and then I let you work with it. <laughs> you forgot how ironic, <laughs> right? That's, again, and look on Justin's face when the words started spewing out, like, <laughs> right? And then all of a sudden it just started getting fast. So you, have, you guys have the same, the, same, the same look on your face when you start riffing hypnotic language, right? When I teach, start teaching you CPI patterns and I start making you do words, so you're like, <laughs> and then by like six or seven passes, you're like riffing, like, where's this shit coming from? Right? Because your brain re rewires and retunes itself very, very quickly. It recalibrates. But if you don't use these faculties, you, don't, you, you, don't, you, don't, you won't get there. You know, Kevin Trudeau would, would, would walk into a room of 400 people and memorize all their names. As he, hi, how you doing? Hi, how you doing? Boom, boom, boom. And he would just recall them. Boom, boom, boom. Why? Because he'd done this process so many times, so often, that he, it would just happen. Usually faster than he could consciously process it. And that's what we talk about, right? We have to go from conscious, unconscious incompetence, unconscious, or conscious incompetence, conscious competence, unconscious competence, right? And the only way through that is repetitions. Now we can shorten those reps through hypnosis, NLP and altered state work, but you can't remove the reps. You can minimize them, you can get more return on your investment, but you're not gonna eliminate that variable completely. And anybody who tells you that is trying to sell you something. Right, until we get that whole matrix shit going on, which I'm waiting for. <laughs> right? um, and even then, 
right? Unless it's going to burn in the neural pathways in addition to the knowledge, you're still going to have to practice to wire in the biomechanics and everything else, right? So those are the things I would do based on what we already know. Now, if you have hypnotic principles, you have um, another way that you can really amp get a, a lot of bang for your buck is to do some kind of brainwave entrainment. We're using alpha states or theta states and run through your memory palace while in those states and that will help to wire those things in even more powerfully. I like pleasure states myself because the more we, we have fun with it, the more we're gonna want to look for opportunities to do it. And that's, that's the key. If we make this fun and playful and something we just go to have, out and have fun with, it's not, an, it's not a chore when it comes time to use it for something real. Not that playful states aren't real, but you know what I mean, right? So, does that help? Yeah. Have we beaten the memory thing to death? Or do you guys want more? <laughs> Right? Now, another thing that can happen a lot of times is a lot of times our imagery isn't strong enough. A lot of times our imagery isn't strong enough or the visceral impact isn't strong enough to really wire it in and at a deep level. So we go back to point and, point and fix, as I like to call it. If there's something you want to remember more powerfully, more vividly, point to where the feeling it generates in your body is stored, reach out and touch the picture in the space around you, expand the picture. Okay? And that will intensify the experience for most people. If that's not enough, pull it closer to the body. That will amp. It's like turning the volume knob up to a 12. The closer it gets to the core of the body, the more intense it becomes until you're in it all over again. Right? So if you need to, use that. Right? Okay. So it is 10 minutes to 3. What do you guys want to do?